everyone. Welcome to Plants and Politics. So it's official. William Barr is out as the Attorney General of the United States. He'll be leaving before Christmas. And this makes Barr, of course, the second AG to lose the trust of one-term Trump. And it does appear that Barr's leaving of his own volition. Of course, Trump has refused repeatedly lately to say if he still had confidence in him, but Barr also has indicated more recently that he might leave, that he isn't happy. And of course, they had that recent shouting match. But throughout his tenure, Barr has done nothing but lie for Trump. But this is the way Trump operates. It's never enough. He is loyal to no one, but you can't step out of line whatsoever. Let's take a walk down memory lane, shall we? <laughs> Let's remember what all Barr was responsible for. He told the American people that Robert Mueller found no evidence of wrongdoing. He gave Trump the phony talking point that he had been totally exonerated, even though Mueller said that he would absolutely prosecute Trump when he was out of office for his 10 instances of obstruction of justice, that that would be legally viable. And but for the Office of Legal Counsel's opinion and that ridiculous memo that you can't prosecute a sitting president, he would have already done so. He would have done it right then on the spot. And then Barr lied to the American people again when he said Obama illegally spied on Trump's campaign, even though we just found out from the inspector general for the DOJ that that was not the case. They issued their report. They looked into it. They said, no, not true. Barr tried to dismiss the Flynn case, even though he admitted to lying to the FBI, something that any one of us would go to prison for. He's repeatedly tried to protect Trump in that defamation case involving the alleged rape brought against Trump by that writer, E. Jean Carroll. He even tried to get you and I, us as taxpayers, to foot the bill for Trump's defense as if that makes any sense at all, when it supposedly happened decades ago. He went against the advice of the prosecutors in the Roger Stone case. He imposed his will in that lawsuit and got Stone a slap on the wrist. And that resulted in backlash in his department and resignations from the case. He had that letter that was signed by thousands of former DOJ officials telling him to resign. Based on his fealty to Trump and his refusal to uphold the law, they said he needed to step down. But he didn't. Still, he helped Trump. He helped him tear gas peaceful protesters, shoot them with rubber bullets and pepper balls, all so Trump could have his infamous upside down Bible photo op. Then he went along with Trump's false narrative about election fraud. He lied about ballots that had been found in the trash. They were in the trash, but he indicated that all nine of the ballots were for Trump when, in fact, two of them were for Biden. So that indicated that it was more of an accident or an oversight than an intentional attempt to dispose of Trump votes. I mean, if you were purposely trying to throw away Trump ballots only, why would you also throw away two that were for Biden? But even after all of that, everything he's done for Trump, Trump viewed him as disloyal. Barr could see the writing on the wall. He decided to jump off of SS Trump Tannic. He wasn't going to go down with that ship. And he knew that if he lied again for Trump in an election where over 81 million Americans wanted Trump gone, he was going to have to concoct the evidence to back up his own fraud. He wasn't going to do that. That was a bridge too far. And, you know, of course, Trump is furious about Barr keeping the Hunter Biden investigations under wraps until after the election. But there's so much hatred in this country for Trump, well-placed hatred, that even if the story had been front page news prior to the election, it wouldn't have mattered. And anyone who thinks that it would have, I recommend that you go look at the YouTube channel called Republican Voters Against Trump. Even Republicans were sick and tired of him. So many of them said, literally, this is their quote verbatim, I would vote for a can of tomatoes over Trump. So 
voters weren't going to care that the grown son of a presidential candidate was under investigation for not paying his taxes. One that has nothing to do with Joe Biden. Once your child is grown, they're on their own. They make their own decisions. And two, again, people weren't voting so much for Biden as they were against Trump. It would not have made a difference. And it's truly hypocritical for anyone to be railing against Barr for keeping this hidden when the DOJ literally hid the fact that Trump, not his child, but Trump, the actual presidential candidate himself, was under investigation in 2016 for potentially colluding with a foreign country to steal the election. I think that's a little more important that the American people know <laughs> so you can't have it both ways. It was bad enough that Comey announced that the Clinton investigation had resumed and then nothing came of it. But in the meantime, it tanked her numbers. But you couple that with the fact that they hid the Trump investigation and really, seriously, Trump supporters are going to complain about the whole Hunter Biden thing. And I'm so tired of people talking about Barr as if, oh, you know, he had such a stellar reputation and look at what Trump did to him. No, no, he did not. Go back and look at his record. The guy has always been a liar for Republicans. He did it for Bush. He covered up crimes for Bush. He was not a good guy before. Why do you think Trump hired him? You think Trump is going to hire some choir boy? Seriously? He knew what he was getting with Barr. He knew how far he would push it. He knew that he was, let's call him, morally challenged. He wouldn't have hired him if he wasn't. He was scum before this. He'll always be scum. Again, liberals, please stop assuming that everyone was great before Trump even Democrats. <laughs> Please look at their history. Please do your research. Anyway, this is good news. I'm glad. I mean, they're all going to be gone anyway next month, but boy, it can't come soon enough. As always, like, share, subscribe. Thanks for watching and listening. I'll talk with you soon. Take care. Thanks for listening to Plants and Politics. The only way we can take our country and power back is to spread the truth and build an army. So remember to like, follow, subscribe, and share on Facebook, YouTube, and wherever you listen to your podcasts. Thanks again.